History doesn't remember blood, it remembers names. Damon the Rogue Prince Targaryen. Ladies and gentlemen, House of the Dragon season is officially here as HBO has dropped its first actual full trailer for House of the Dragon, complete with dialogue, music, and of course, dragons. So let's jump right in and break this thing down shot by shot. And obviously this will contain very minor spoilers as I break down a little bit more detail what we're seeing in these particular shots. So just a fair warning in case you don't want to know anything about House of the Dragon and want to be completely surprised. This will be going into a little bit of detail, but I do have a full playlist with more detail on each of these characters and the events that lead up to and during the Dance of the Dragons. So I will leave that link in the description below. So let's jump right in. The opening shot, we have Rhaenyra Targaryen, and she's likely at a funeral here, probably of Lena Valerion. Now, Lena Valerion was the eldest child and only daughter of Lord Corlys Valerion and Princess Rhaenys Targaryen. Now, what's key here is that she was the second wife of Prince Daemon Targaryen and gave birth to his twin daughters, Rhaena and Bela. Lena was a dragon rider as well and rode the dragon Vagar, the largest dragon other than Valyrian the Black Dread, but unfortunately she died from complications during childbirth. And next we have a shot of Dragonstone with Daemon and his mistress Masaria, the White Worm, as he attempts to send her to Essos with a dragon egg as his brother King Viserys banishes her across the narrow sea. He did not approve of this relationship. And we see a shot here where apparently Sir Otto Hightower, this bastard right here, is going to attempt to stop him from at least taking the dragon egg. At this point, Masaria is pregnant with Damon's child and his brother, King Viserys, proclaims she must leave alone and not to take the egg. And we'll definitely see Masaria again as she becomes more intricate to the story later on. But without any major spoilers here, some bad shit happens at sea, and this helps to further Damon as a character and his ambitions to rule. Next, we see Damon flying Caraxes to King's Landing. This is his dragon, Caraxes, and here he's going to King's Landing, and likely when he comes back to make amends with his brother after he had conquered the Stepstones with Corlys Valerion and declared himself King of the Stepstones. He lands and presents his brother with his crown of the Stepstones and is once again brought into the small council and is made Lord Commander of the City Watch. And next we go to the throne room, the new and improved throne room with the new, more book accurate Iron Throne, where lords all across the land of Westeros, including Rickon Stark, Corlys Velaryon, Orman Baratheon, swear fealty to Viserys, but more importantly to Rhaenyra, his named heir. This is likely when he names Rhaenyra his heir, and during his reign, people keep bringing it up to him because she is a woman. They keep fucking with him about it, so he has the realm swell fealty to her, so once he dies, there'll be no issues for her ascending to the Iron Throne. So here, he's likely naming her the heir in the first place, and this will stir the pot because he's skipping over his brother Damon as well as other males, which is obviously a big issue during this time and causes all this shit in the first place. Now, Viserys' first wife, Aima Arryn, has died, and all his sons as well due to various illnesses. So this, of course, leads him to name his daughter, Rhaenyra Targaryen, heir to the Iron Throne. And by the way, if you like these type of videos, this is brought to you by my wonderful patrons over on Patreon. If you would like to support this channel, consider joining our Patreon community as we try to rebuild this channel as we get into House of the Dragon season and the other prequels as well. You can also support the channel by joining the channel as a channel member, and this will unlock emojis as well as badges that will display during chats, during live streams, and also on comments on regular videos. And also, YouTube has a new feature called the Thanks button, which is right below each and every video, which is essentially a tip jar if you like this type of content. Also, a quick reminder for those that may be new here or those returning, I have written a book that came out last October called The Crimson Gods. It is a medieval fantasy, dark fantasy novel. So if you dig medieval fantasy, dark fantasy, be sure to pick up your copy of The Crimson Gods. And I really appreciate everyone who's already picked up the book and left reviews on Amazon. And those links will be in the description below. And next we get Daemon Targaryen as Lord Commander of the City Watch. And as I mentioned in a previous video, he brings a little bit more honor back to the City Watch. At the time, they were basically a ragtag police unit, and he gives them proper uniforms, weapons, and of course, gold cloaks, and makes it more of an honorable thing to be a member of the City Watch. And this is where he becomes known as Lord Fleabottom. He is unrelenting against crime in King's Landing and gains the loyalty, even after he leaves again, of the City Watch, which as was stated in Game of Thrones, if you control the City Watch, you control the city. And from this point on, the City Watch is known as the Gold Cloaks. And during this, we also hear a voiceover of Rhaenys talking to her young Rhaenyra, where she says men would sooner put the realm to the torch than let a woman ascend to the Iron Throne, which of course is the underlying theme of this whole damn show. During this as well, we see Gold Cloaks handing out ass whoopings as they become known for under Daemon. If you steal shit, you lose the hand. Then we go to Dragonstone and the Painted Table. Now this looks a bit different from Game of Thrones, but of course we saw this a lot with Stannis, and then later on in seasons seven and eight when Danny finally came to Westeros. But again, it is hard to see in this dark lighting, but this will likely be near the end of the season when Rhaenyra hears her father has died and Aegon II was crowned against Viserys' wishes. This will be the first meeting of the Black Council on Dragonstone at the famous Painted Table 
that Aegon the Conqueror had built when he conquered Westeros. And next we see Harrenhal. You can see here from the melted stone around this. And remember, this is where Aegon the Conqueror, when he conquered Westeros, actually burned and melted Harrenhal and Heron the Black inside with all his men because he didn't think about dragons being able to burn stone. Now this is likely going to be some type of flashback to the Great Council of 101 AC, and this is when Rhaenys Targaryen herself, the wife of Corlys Balearion, was actually passed over by her father, King Jaehaerys, after his son Aemon died. She became known as the Queen Who Never Was, and also her son Laenor was also passed over, which pissed off Corlys Balearion as well. But during this time, when Jaehaerys I was still alive, over 500 lords met here to discuss 14 claims of the Iron Throne, and eventually Viserys I was chosen. And you guys remember Heron Hall from Game of Thrones. This is when Tywin Lannister and Arya spent some time together, and she talked about the conquest as well, as far as Rhaenys, Visenya, and Aegon the Conqueror, which is why we thought we'd see something like Dark Sister in Game of Thrones. But of course, this is what Damon carries as well, so we do see Dark Sister, as well as Blackfire that we saw in the teaser trailer as well that King Viserys is holding, the House Ancestral Blades of House Targaryen. Then there's a quick cut over to the current throne room in King's Landing where the young Alicent walks in and kisses Viserys, but immediately after that we see a dragon egg, and someone is actually trying to hatch one here. This is what the Targaryens would do at the time. They would lay dragon eggs in the cribs of Targaryen babies to form a bond, and then try to hatch them over a fire. But this is essentially what they would do to try to hatch dragon eggs before they started to lose their knowledge and blood bonds with their dragons. And of course later on this would lead to the extinction of the dragons themselves. During this Dance of the Dragons they lost most of them, but the rest that were actually hatched were always small because they kept locking them up in the dragon pit, which led to their demise over time as we saw in Game of Thrones until Daenerys Targaryen brought them back with fire and blood. And next we cut over to the current Alicent and her asshole father, Sir Otto Hightower, as he finishes his line, this is a dirty game we play. You have the determination to win it, talking about the Game of Thrones. Now this dude hates Daemon Targaryen with a passion, and knowing he has married Rhaenyra at this point, he would essentially make him king. He and Alicent start the whole thing by crowning her son Aegon II and ignores the wishes of her husband, King Viserys, so she crowns her own son instead of calling on and crowning his chosen heir, Rhaenyra Targaryen. And next we see the Valerians, as we saw in the teaser, walk in all decked out, arriving likely at the wedding of Prince Rhaenyra to Lenore Valerian, her first husband. Now as it turns out, he prefers the company of men, but she has children nonetheless. And of course, the next shot we do see Damon as they walk in sitting next to Lionel Strong. Now, Lionel is the father of Harwin Strong, otherwise known as Breakbones. And this is the rumor, and likely 99.9% .9 true, that Harwin is the true father to Rhaenyra's children, as they all have brown hair, unlike their parents, who are both of Valyrian descent. So although Rhaenyra married Lenore, he likes dudes, and she had an affair, and this will ultimately cause a rift between her children and Queen Alicent's children as well, and of course then a rift will form between the two queens themselves. And next we see young Rhaenyra and Lenore dancing, so this is likely their wedding night as we see the celebration as well, as at this point Lenore would essentially become the king consort, being that Rhaenyra at this point is named heir to the Iron Throne. And next we see the funeral, as mentioned in the opening scene, of Lena Valerian on Driftmark, and this is their customary sea burial. So this will be the death of Daemon's first wife and will make him rethink his strategy to get closer to the Iron Throne. And then next we see Rhaenyra walking away, probably during this funeral, and then we get our first shot of Sir Criston Cole, who is part of the King's Guard, and he is at this point with Queen Alicent. Now this bastard had been personal guard to Rhaenyra before, but had been shunned by her, or perhaps he had shunned her at some point. No one really knows the story, because he did have vows to the King's Guard. But either way, he eventually found favor with Queen Alicent and ended up being on Team Green. And then we have a shot here of, I believe, Damon being caught in bed with Rhaenyra. Apparently, Rhaenyra had always been smitten with Damon, and then, of course, once she was named heir, he saw an opportunity to get close to the Iron Throne. So they would eventually be married, but Viserys didn't approve of this. So the rumor is he took her maidenhead and he was caught in bed with her. And this, of course, caused another fallout between him and his brother Viserys the King. They had many throughout the years. Then we get a quick shot of Kristen Cole turning Harwin Strong break bones into broken bones. And then another quick shot of Rhaenyra and Uncle Damon probably getting married, as I mentioned before. And then we go back to Otto Hightower, the Hand of the King, trying to stop Damon from taking the egg across the nearest sea, as I mentioned previously as Damon actually draws Dark Sister and says, get the fuck out of my way. And then we have a shot of Alicent trying to stab Rhaenyra Targaryen here, likely after her son Aemon lost his eye to one of her kids as he tried to mount the dragon Vagar. She wanted justice, an eye for an eye. And this is what ultimately solidifies the rift between the two queens and kind of forms the greens and the blacks once they attend this tournament 
based off the color dress they're wearing. So after that tournament, they become known as the Blacks and the Greens. And finally, we see Damon Targaryen laying down his torch as we saw in the teaser trailer, likely beneath Dragonstone here, trying to get that egg for Masaria to send her across the narrow sea. Now, of course, he's bonded to his dragon Caraxes, and he is a Targaryen, so the dragons have a little more of a bond with them. That doesn't mean he's not in danger. Targaryens died all the time to dragons, so he's not bonded to this particular dragon, and it's hard to tell which one this is due to the lighting here, but likely he's trying to go in here and take a dragon egg from a clutch that's been laid, apparently. And there it is, every single shot in the first House of the Dragon full trailer. Be sure to check out my House of the Dragon playlist as well in the description below for more details on events and characters during this time period which again is about 170 years before Game of Thrones. And as usual, thank you for all the support, especially you guys on Patreon. And a huge shout out to my executive Patreon smoke screen producers. And if you dig what I do here, please give these videos a like, comment, and a share. And be sure to hit that subscribe button as we try to reach 100,000 subscribers and rebuild this channel as House of the Dragon quickly approaches. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.